Hi guys, this is Cindy with Twisted Tristan. How you guys all doing? Surprise, surprise! Charlene Cadle has some explaining to do. If you don't know who she is, she's the breakout author of True Crime Book Letters from Christopher. Published um, this year by Dorrance Publishing. This is Anne K. Howard, author of the true crime novel, His Garden, Conversations with a Serial Killer, published July 2018 on Wild Blue Press. The subject of Cadle's book is Christopher Watts, and the subject of Miss Howard's book is William Devon Howell. Let's cover what plagiarism means. The practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. A copyright is a form of protection grounded in the U.S. Constitution. With that being said, let's look at Letters from Christopher, page 10. And his garden, Conversations with a Serial Killer. We're going to do a little compare-contrast. Cato says, to this day, I don't know what prompted me to get to know a familia murderer. As Howard says, to this day, I cannot say for certain what prompted me to get to know a serial killer. Cato says, other than I needed to know why he would do something like this. And tear apart so many lives. Howard says, wreaking havoc on the lives of so many, and perhaps more importantly. Cato says, how did the innocent child grow into a killing evil monster? As Howard says, how did the innocent infant transform into a wild beast? Cato says, why do we live in a world where such evil exists? Miss Howard says, why do we live in a world for such evil exists. Cato says, I needed to know what made this man tick. Miss Howard says, other than to say that I needed to figure out what made the man tick. Page 9, letters from Christopher. Cato says, how do we know if Christopher is telling the truth? That will be left up to the reader to decide. And in the foreword of Miss Howard's book. But how do you know if Howell is telling you the truth? That is for the reader to decide. Cadle says, that said, the body of work strives for accuracy. Miss Howard says the same exact thing. Cato says it's derived from thousands of pages of trial transcripts, affidavits, police interviews, newspaper articles, and Miss Howard's book also says the same exact thing, word for word, surprise, surprise. Cato says discussions with victims' family members. Miss Howard says discussions with victims' family members. Ms. Cato says, hundreds of pages of letters from the serial killer to the author. Ms. Howard says, and hundreds of pages of letters from the serial killer to the author. Cato says, our relationship started by letters and evolved into face-to-face -face meetings. Ms. Howard says, it began with written correspondence and evolved into monthly face-to-face -face meetings. Cato says he knew the sole purpose of our communication was my plan to write a book about him. He also knew what I would end up writing would not always be to his liking. Miss Howard says at all times he knew that the sole purpose of our communications was my plan to write a book about him. And he also knew 
that what I would end up writing would not always be to his liking. Cato says, The great challenge for any true crime writer involves drafting a page-turning story that reads like well-crafted literature. And verbatim, the same thing is in Miss Howard's book. Cato says, with stylistic and thematic traits that transcend traditional journalism. Of course, she copied that word from word from Miss Howard's book. And simultaneously survives the most detailed of fact checks. Miss Howard says, and simultaneously survives the most detailed of fact checks. Mrs. Cadel says it is impossible. It is an impossible endeavor because it carries the assumption that truth. Ms. Howard says that it, it is an impossible endeavor because it carries the assumption that truth. Is discernible at all levels and can and 100% of the facts can always be known. Like all forms of art, true crime literature seeks to capture what is non-decipherable. Cato says, like all forms of art, true crime literature seeks to capture what is non-decipherable. Paradoxically, without fabricated layers of myth and conjecture. Kind of big words for you, huh? Paradoxically, without fabricated layers of myth and conjecture, according to Miss Howard. Cato says, truth laid bare is not really truth at all. All I can say to that is no shit. On your planet, Mrs. Cato, that's true. Howard says, truth laid bare is not really truth at all. Cato says, that said, the body of my work strives for accuracy and the truth. It is derived from thousands of pages of discovery, court documents, police interviews, family members, and hundreds of words in the pages of letters from Christopher to myself. I took a deep breath before writing to Christopher. As Howard says, I took a deep breath before writing my first letter to Howell. Okay, the author is Anne K. Howard. She has a bachelor's in English Lit. And creative Writing Awards. She is a practicing attorney in Connecticut. The subject of her book is serial killer William Devin Howell, about author Sherilyn Cadle, retired, enjoys golf and true crime. From the back of her book, it says, read the completely truthful account. There are many true crime junkies that take all of this very seriously. No one wants to hear excuses. They just want the truth and in detail. It did not take long to know most of the information on media sources was made up information. Well, let's see. Mrs. Cato, truth equals factual. Cato states the book required extensive research and that she has a natural talent for writing. I think she forgot to mention her natural talent for copying other people's work, otherwise known as plagiarizing. And she definitely 
neglected to mention her natural talent for copyright infringement. That's her biggest talent right there. Mrs. Cadle appears to believe we are uneducated. So does Chris Watts for that matter. She thinks that we're all gullible. She says this story was writing itself. No, all I can say is you copied virtually word for word a major portion of your book. And you tried to pass off someone else's work as your own. This is uh, your breakthrough book. And I think it kind of tells a lot about your character or lack thereof. So copyright protects original works of authorship, including literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic works. According to copyright.gov, you may be sued. You willfully published another author's work as your own. That equals copyright infringement and doesn't do a whole lot for your credibility. This is a blatant disregard for the author and K. Howard who put in years of research, time, and money. That's why she's a best-selling true crime author. This is also a blatant disregard for the victims in this case. And for the victim's family. It's a blatant disregard for readers of your book. And a blatant disregard for ethics. And it also is, in my opinion, the epitome of greed was your desire to write a book thwarted by pure laziness. This is my opinion. It's not hard to write. You just sit at your typewriter and bleed by Ernest Hemingway. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.